He studied architecture. I think that comes out in his work. There's one thing that's amazing about him is that he's very honest as a person. Architecture are, are like sculptors or painters or, or free artists and he's there to, to put a frame around that and he's there to be able to make sense of a lot of messes that are usually made in the studio. There's a finesse in his production, there's a beauty in his songwriting and he truly is something, you know, above and beyond what, what we usually experience in India as an artist and a musician. It's not like we're doing a job when you go and work with him. So you just end up having fun. Blue Frog makes some noise for God of Rain now. Green! What's up, Blue Frog? I come from a very like music-oriented family in terms of both my parents were pretty into music. There was a lot of music played in the house while I was growing up, from record players, from radios. Do one thing, we, let's just configure the First few memories I have are of basically the, the vinyls that my parents had bought, the records, which were stuff like Boney M, uh, Donna Summer, then the usual Indian like Silsila, Umrao Jaan, all of that. So. I kind of got a little bit educated in um, that kind of music uh, at a fairly young age. Mostly through school, I developed a habit of collecting cassettes. By the time I was like nearing the end of my school, I, uh, I had a fairly decent collection of tapes. Like I would say like 100 to 250, 200 tapes. While I was in my 11th grade, uh, I had a friend who once called me up and he's like, I'd love to for you to come and play music at a party. So get your tapes and come over. So I must have been like 17 years old or 16 years old and I went there with uh, my tapes in a little suitcase, played a bunch of dance music back then. And um, that was my first uh, DJing uh, stint. Gaurav is one of my best friends and easily one of my most favorite producers in India. I have written on Grey to Silver, Grey to Silver which is Grain's new album. Um, I wrote on two tracks, one song called Good Thing, which we're sharing actually, it's going on my solo album as well. And the other song is called Time to Restart. Hello, check, one, two. Working with Monica, it's a breeze. It's almost like we work on a common frequency. I'd like to call up on stage another very close friend who's been very instrumental in the making of this album. Please, sir, uh, welcome Monica Dobra. As far as the, the sound goes, or the aesthetic goes, or even you know thinking about the choruses or the verses in a song or lyrics in a song, it's really easy for me to work with them. Gaurav is easily one of my best friends. We've performed in so many different cities, we've traveled all over the world together, experienced the biggest music festivals in the world together. So this is just like another step, you know, on that journey. This fluidity in, in the entire process, because 
very often I just write say a, just a kick drum or just a bass line and she get it. And right from there we'll discuss what the track is about and before you know it we're already writing lyrics and we've already written the melody of the chorus so she's a super cool smooth artist who I love working with. I knew that I wanted to do something to do with music. I knew that uh, music is like one of my calling. Just like any other kid at that age, I was also a little confused because not knowing an instrument was a bit of a drawback. So there was no career I could really think of. But when I went to Bombay and hung out at different nightclubs, I realized, yeah, this, there is a career in this. Like you can actually not learn music and still be involved in, uh, in the world of music by playing good music to people, being a DJ. So, I trained as a DJ then in Bombay. I came back to Delhi and uh, started playing private parties and stuff like that and uh, soon enough I realized that uh, the music that I really wanted to play wasn't the commercial type. I wanted to play something different. So we made our own parties. We started throwing our own parties in Delhi and started the pundits with uh, Tapan. So those parties got really big and that was the start of my individuality as a DJ. Soon I also started then thinking that if I can do this, why can't I just make something fresh, like mix a bunch of stuff. So I started mixing um, Indian vocals and Indian classical stuff with drum and bass. After a year of me doing that, I was like, okay, so why don't I try getting some of it sung or playing some of it. So, so cut to like two, three years later, I started writing original music. We're finally uh, on our way to Pune from Mumbai after playing a very banging show last night at, uh, at Blue Frog Bombay and it, had, it was a massive turnout and uh, we are very very excited to be going to Blue Frog Pune for the first time. Apparently it's just opened a month ago and it's kick ass. We've played in Pune many times. Uh, we, pretty much at most of the festivals and uh, had a great crowd. Puna people like our music, so I'm happy that I have Kirsh, Ankur, Sid Basur with me on this leg. I've known uh, Gaurav Rana for many years now uh, and there's one thing that's amazing about him is that he's very honest as a person. He doesn't hold anything back, he just expresses himself honestly, straightforward, what he means. And that comes out in his music as well. There's no uh, fat in the music, it's very trim, it's fit.
just straight to the point uh, and yet it has a deeper meaning and uh, in, an intense quality because it comes from a, a deep soulful uh, space. I just started working with him actually about a year ago or so and uh, before that we had worked on um, a couple of his old films which he had done earlier so I knew him as a director and then I saw him doing his Indian songs. That was stuff which uh, we worked on together but it wasn't something I could get in because I wasn't doing Hindi music. Working with Gaurav on Grey to Silver was uh, quite an amazing experience because uh, we worked on many projects in, in the past, uh, he did the, with Medieval Pandits, he did the music for my movie Let's Enjoy. Then uh, there's so many tracks, I've been following the music for really long and we worked on many, many, many projects. But this was quite uh, a different experience in a way because this was one side of his which we all knew existed but he had not expressed uh, musically. This part of his was not explored and it, we all were very happy when he decided that he also wants to explore this side of his music. It was when he played the guitar for me, just when we became really good friends and he just played the guitar for me uh, one evening and I was like, dude, we've got to record this because this is awesome. And nobody knows that you're such a good guitar player. Like he plays melodies so beautifully. He feels it. It's like straight from the heart into the guitar. I've never played an instrumental track before. Like I, I'm a singer-songwriter, so I've pretty much back my uh, guitar playing with lyrics but his uh, music that he, the bed that he'd given me for Distant Rumble was so lyrical itself that I didn't feel the gap for lyrics uh, in this song so I, for the first time I played an instrumental track just pure guitar. When he sent me the final mix, I was uh, like, wow, like, is this us? It was, it was quite, quite exciting. I'm really uh, looking forward to the response uh, from people, what they think about it. It's always a very intimate experience with him because it's not like we're doing a job. When you go and work with him, the studio is a very nice space, it's like a home. You go there, chill there. So you just end up having fun and at the end of the day, uh, when you've had a lot of fun, you realize you also made a, a track that you love. So uh, it's always uh, a fun experience working with Gaurav. Working with him is so interesting. He's got these, these beautiful, interesting melodies just coming out of him when you just play something for him. And, and the ease at which he understands the kind of electronic stuff that I do adds to the whole process. We kind of took it to the next level and said, okay, let's just release it like a proper release. Um, and after that, it was like, okay, you should have a live band. I was like, okay, this music needs to be represented on a stage. Every time I would think of what would the live band look like, I would, I would kind of think of the Blue Frog stage. From the start, I knew that this tour has to be launched at the Blue Frog. It's awesome to be working with the frog and as always uh, these guys uh, are simply the best. Yo check, one two check. I met uh, Gaurav Reyna aka Grain back in uh, 1999 
Um, so we had a, a quite a, about a decade's worth of, of collaboration that we could draw from when it came time for him to decide to, to do his own solo project. Working with Kirsch, actually almost like working with a brother, like there is absolutely no holds barred, like everything is right there. He has really strong musical ideas. He's mainly he's a producer. So he's somebody who knows how to take a lot of different ideas uh, from a lot of different musicians, sometimes you know, very stubborn musicians who have very kind of strict views about what they want in music, um, and make sense of it and make uh, uh, you know, create a palette for them to be able to work within. So this was great because I think he, he chose to work with his friends as opposed to seeking out new artists to collaborate with or kind of some dream project. And I think that the cool thing was is that you know, he opened up a new door for everybody involved um, to be able to you know, explore new territories. Oftentimes as musicians we get caught in, in, in a trap and we wind up doing the same things over and over again. And it's only usually through collaborations that you get to move forward in a different direction. And I think that's what the, this Grain record has really done for him especially and for all the artists involved. His musicality is, is really, uh, is very complex and I, my musicality is fairly simple because you know, I'm not as trained as he is and as knowledgeable about music. I think it would have been different if we had just met and tried to do what we accomplished on the album. I think it was only possible because of the years of, of, the, of the different stuff that we had done and put out and, and touring and all the different places we played all over the world and all of that kind of stuff coming into the mix so that you can actually put that stuff aside and, and create something new. This combination of where his complexity gets simplified by me and my simplicity gets complexified by him is the key um, spice in, in our relationship, working relationship. Thank you, thank you very, very much. This album actually took me two years to make. I wanted it to take a very natural course. It was just when my friends were in town, like when Kash, Monica, Ankur, when they were in town, I would sit down with them, maybe do another track and then do one more track for Rain. 
it was all about having fun. It was all about feeling the emotions, having a laugh, and creating some interesting music. The point of making the whole Grain project was for me to create a stream of thought, a stream of communication, musical communication, where I can just release these ideas that I have in my head. It's a certain sound, a certain aesthetic. This guy, he comes up to me. His face red like the rose on a thorn bush. Like all the colors of a royal flower. The entire aesthetic of Grain is about making emotional electronica. You know, in this world, uh, in, especially in our country, EDM is the only electronica. Like, uh, everyone's forgotten that electronica actually started as a musical element in songs. And then house music came and techno and trance. Through the alleys of a quiet city street, you take the staircase to the first floor, you turn the key and totally unlock the door. But there is a whole emotional, more song-written, lyrical side of Electronica, which is what the green sound is all about. So for me to be able to express myself in that context was the main thing. And it's a huge thing for me to have that stream of expression. And that's what I'm going to keep doing, is keep making songs. Maybe not an album for a bit, but I will definitely be releasing a bunch of singles or EPs uh, pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so very much. Blue Frog, make some motherfucking noise for God of Rain now. Great!